Are you? Are you? Watching our reviews. <laughs> <laughs> we clicked on the analytics and it said zero views. <laughs> So The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, a movie that no one asked for? Yeah. Based on a book that I guess no one asked for, but people kind of I enjoyed? I think people were happy with the idea of the book. He's a character that you see and he's a giant jerk, but does mm. that make... Do you watch him in the movies and you're like, damn, I need to know more about why this guy's a big old prick? Yeah. Because he's just evil, right? Like, he's not even... No, he's like, a, he's a cunning character. And like he does things in the movies. And look, we're not we haven't read read the books because we we review movies we can't here, read. not books. Um, this isn't your mum's book club, okay? This is Uncle Marco and Dan's movie review channel. Subscribe. A character who always did whatever it took to stay in power and keep everything how it was. Yeah, you know? it, seemed, it seemed more power based than like save the world kind of deal, right? No, I think it was just more like just keep things the way they are. Yeah, you know, yeah. I remember him at, because his name was Snow and he had white hair mm -hmm. more than I do for his character. I think this movie was more um, not for Snow itself. I think people probably showed more interest in how the world got to where it was. It's like things that already happened. Like there was like a the great the great civil war. It's a lot. Things. It's a lot of talking about the big war. Mm. It'd be like a World War One movie that's set just after World War One. Yes, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just a little clunky at times. Mm -hmm. and so, I, but I think that's um, kind of a hurdle that they had to go through is how much of the world building, the pre-world world building can we do before we start world building? Yeah. It's like, cause there's, there's this thing that affected what the characters are going through now, which is kind of important, but how much can we show? And you really only get that first, you know, that it's scene where Snow and- It's an initial flashback. You get that for like 40 seconds and then that's it. They're like, I'm hungry, and then they watch a man- What's he doing? He's hungry too. <laughs> and then you just see like a businessman with a meat cleaver, like- and, just Yeah, like, and we find out their people. dad died, but the reason we're talking about it today <gasps> is because there's a lot of controversy. I don't even know if it's a controversy. It's- mm. the critics all say it's fine, mm -hmm. like, I Put think it's, it's, it's at like 60%, so yeah, it, it's fine. And then what I assume are book fans, mostly it's at 96 percent or something it's crazy yeah. like people are loving this movie and who is correct we're gonna talk about it we really have no idea <laughs> <laughs> i enjoyed it i'm gonna say like overall you'd recommend it to someone i'm gonna say 6.5 out of 10. i'd probably give it less but uh so let's talk about the story to start with it really is just about president snow it's not even about his rise so much and I think maybe a problem with either the format of the movie or just the plot of it, but I didn't particularly care about Snow all that much. I was more interested in the world because they actually show a fair amount of the world. It basically follows Snow from being a poor kid in high school, uh, a poor kid in university, yeah. to he has to then become the first mentor of the Hunger Games. Mm -hmm. He gets the cute girl. Mm -hmm. Oh no, <laughs> what is he going to do? Fall in love with her. That's what he's going to goddamn do. Basically, they have to make him a really good, likable character. Yeah. And then they have to finish the movie with him being kind of a monster. Yeah, it's like, it's like you're watching a movie about an artist in 1925 Germany or Austria, and you're like, this guy's really likable. And at the end, <laughs> you see him put on his, his hat and like shave his little mustache, and you're like, it was Hitler! <laughs> It's like, he was Hitler the whole time! They call him Addy the whole time. Like, Addy, Addy what are you doing, Addy? And he's like, oh, just painting, mate. Just painting. I don't know why he's suddenly Ocker. <laughs> oh, just painting. They use, they're like, oh, fuck. It's like, you know, Chernobyl? All the actors oh, are like... they're all British. It's yeah. like, we were in Chernobyl, and there was an accident. Well, do you remember the Red October? <laughs> we're Very hunting true. for the Red October. <laughs> See, I think, I think there was, like, a pretty solid tone throughout the movie of... Consistent tone, consistent, not consistent character. Well, uh, consistent, used well, mm -mm, of, like, Snow being, like... Everything I do is for the future of me and my family and Panem. I think they Until tried. the third act, I agree. They had to really just make his character suited for every scene that he's in, and they didn't make him consistent. Yeah. They were like, people are going to hate me for that opinion. They're going to say, but he was, the, he was the same the whole time. I think he flip-flopped a bit. Well, yeah, in, in the third act mainly. So they broke the movie into three parts, kind of mm -hmm. superfluously. Like, when you break a movie into three, you're kind of just like, hey, it's the beginning, middle, and end. Like, you, do, you, do you really have to put, like, a stopper on that for yeah. us? But the weird thing about the way they do it as well is part one and two is kind of the whole movie. 
And then part three is this, like, addendum tacked on... It's like an epilogue. Yeah, that goes for another hour. Mm. So it's a, it's basically a three-hour movie. Part one, you get everything before the games. You get Snow's poor, resents everyone in the capital, except possibly one other guy that grew up poor. Yeah. But it's like he treats him like he hates him too. Like, he just, like, uses everybody. Yeah, he's very self-serving mm-hmm. slash family serving which makes him likable enough mm-hmm. like he's the actor's great like he probably hold, helps hold the film together despite the fact that the movie probably shouldn't have even been around him but he's good enough it's fine compared to Zegler who I don't think was awful but I think a lot of the movie's hate stems from Zegler because yeah. she's Snow White and people he, she said some things that have pissed a lot of people off yeah but she wasn't that bad in it. No was good, but not memorable in any way. Like, mm. I've kind of already immediately forgotten any word he said. Mm. Like, mm. he didn't really do anything super interesting either. He did a couple of smart things. But, like, good, but I've kind of forgotten about him. He created the modern-day Hunger Games. The first bit of this movie is words just being thrown at you, hey? Yeah. like. They, they need to talk about how poor Snow is. So mm-hmm. they, they show us he's poor, he, he doesn't eat, but he doesn't want people to know he's poor. They introduce us to every character in his class. So they're just spouting off name Man, after name. That's the hardest part to follow about this movie is they're using, they're using new words in this made-up society. Yep. They're using people's full names and they're not normal names. It's not... This is John Smith. He's the Chuck, Chuck class. Off a couple. We got This is Jimmy Jang Jing Jankalus. We got his parents are rich and own the Ford owned distributor. Sejanus? Sejanus? Coriolanus? Coriolanus? Coriolanus, no. Every other one in his class, everyone in the Hunger Games Should gets I pull a name. Up some names for you. Lucy Gray Baird, Arachne Crane, Clemencia Dovecoat, Volumina Gall. Androcles Anderson, Pluribus Bell, Maud Ivory Baird, Billy Torp. Clad, Cloak Carmine Clad, Jessup Diggs. Uh, they do fix that slightly later on during the actual Hunger Games. Lucretius Flickerman. They give fun nicknames to a couple of the people in the Hunger Games. Lucky Flickerman is the host of the Hunger Games. And when he's rattling off their names, like there's a sick person that named Dill and he calls her Ill Dill. And there's another person that's like a bully and her, he rhymes her name. And it's quite clever to make you remember who the people in the Hunger Games are, at least. Mm. But I think, yeah, I think the movie, at least at that part, realizes that there's a lot of names and they're throwing a lot of people. But that's at already you. an hour in. Um, yeah. So by that point, they just start dying as well. Mm. So you don't even care. Yeah. Lucy Gray, Lucy, Lucy Gray Bard, that they will constantly call Lucy Gray. She's mm-hmm. never just Lucy. It's a Peggy Sue. It's a downtown little country bumpkin who starts off being. A 50-year-old black like, woman from well, New I came off of that train there now. And they had me on that train and they're reaping in their Hunger Games. And then at the end of the movie, she's like, Coralina Snow, you better come and help me. Yeah, she goes, she from, goes from like to a southern belt. From the bayou to like, we're from Australia. I don't know where any of these places are. <laughs> Mind you, I'm going off like the Walking Dead video game Very. where everyone's <laughs> talking to me in a, bi- in a strong New Orleans accent. She's kind of like the perfect nice person, despite the fact she's put in the hunger games yeah and she does put a snake down someone's back but she's still like really happy about it yeah so it's a very weird way to she's like ha ha like you think like she'd be like vindictive just a bit i just a bit tearful on the stage or something like you see in the first hunger games movie the the shock and like terror and horror when someone's name gets called up for the reaping yeah I'm and I, I don't care it's like oh it's only the 10th one maybe people don't really know the consequences of it you know, you know you're going after to 10. a death game. I'm wondering if that was kind of intentional because, like, it's not really action-packed or anything until suddenly the, the, it's very gruesome. Like, mm-hmm. it's a very brutal film considering there's no blood. Like, yeah. I didn't really notice for the most part until they slit some guy's throat and then they cut back to a wide shot and he's just kind of, like, yeah. like pretending to be dead. <laughs> when, yeah, he just had his throat slit. It's very brutal. Like, there were const- there were constant jump scares... Which got me. It's crazy. Got There's me more, more than they jump should've. scares in this than the FNAF movie. One hundred percent. Like it shouldn't have got me as much as it did, mm-hmm. but it worked really well for the first two parts of the movie. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. I think I quite enjoy. It was still quite long, but I think I enjoyed the first two hours of this movie. Lucy Gray's fine. She, but she too many songs. I think 
She sings a yeah. little bit too much for me. Well, that's her thing. She's from a traveling band. They do nothing but call her the songbird. She's a traveling gypsy. Like, everyone calls her songbird, and I'm like, God damn, shut up. Careful there, Lucy Gray. Your <laughs> accent's slipping. <laughs> but someone I couldn't stand, despite them being the best slash most accomplished actor in the whole movie, Viola Davis, mm -hmm. was fucking awful. Yeah. I don't... It wasn't her fault, I guess. Like, she did what she did well. Mm -hmm. But I can't stand the insane I couldn't kooky even, character. I couldn't even stand um, Peter Dinklage at times. He, like, he was, was he playing was okay. Peter Dinklage. Yeah. He yeah. was... He's like, oh, I am Tyrion Lannister haunted by the past. It's literally... I'm like, oh, he's playing Tyrion it, Lannister. Yeah, it was, a, it was a bit too much in that direction, I think. Like, they were like, we want you to go with this. And he's like, don't worry, I got this down pat. Like, you yeah, know. that's the thing. He, he's fantastic at it. Yeah. Like, when you see him, you're like, damn, this man is haunted by his past. Just, like, the way he delivers his lines as well is the exact same. It's yeah, I think we've just seen it too much from him. Like, <laughs> down and dour. He wasn't mm -hmm. drinking himself to death with liquid morphine. Uh, it's called morphling. Is that... Yeah. It wasn't morphine, it was morphling? Morphling. Are you lying to me? No, it's a Hunger Games thing. Morphling. <laughs> she just gave up. She was like, morphling. Fuck it. Maybe it was a typo. Maybe she typed morphine. Did a typo and she's like, fuck it, that'll do. Morphling is a narcotic painkiller that is used to treat severe injuries no. or illness. Look, I think this movie, it was interesting, especially because I, I just, I binge watched the last four before this. Um, so like a big thing in your head the entire time watching those movies, is like, how did they get to this? You know, like, did they slowly turn into this? Was it like a, you know, was it a, from the start, was it like this? It is interesting to see, like, this is the first time and Lucky, Lucky Flickerman, Caesar's dad or grandpappy maybe like he's like oh i'm the first host of the hunger games you know it's like they ha they're having a host they're having it televised now they're having like mentors who send things in like it's starting to be more of like a a game show like it's now more survivor mm. and you well, see like it slowly starts to evolve that was my main interest in the movie mm. like because when they started off they kind of explained how the hunger games started to keep the districts in line mm -hmm. like they they do a bit of wordplay about why they actually started the hunger games mm -hmm. It's because it made for a fun book. Like, that was why they started yeah, the Hunger Games. Because, um, <laughs> what's that Korean one? Battle Royale? Right, because yeah. Battle Royale did really good and no one had done it in the West yet. Yeah, so she was like, what if I write a book about it? Although, you mean the Maze Runner? There's also a Matthew Riley book called Contest, which is quite good too. Oh. But, yeah. You mean Fortnite? The framing of the movie is the fact that the games were started and they were a very simple gladiator tournament. Like, mm -hmm. it really was... A big circle room with nowhere to hide, weapons in the middle, a bunch of kids beat the shit out of each other. Mm -hmm. And that was exciting for a couple of years, until ratings dropped. Yeah. And for some reason they need everyone to watch The Hunger Games. They don't... I think they explain why they need them to watch The Hunger Games. I guess like, in the... In for, for simple... For the simple folk, the idea of The Hunger Games is to remind everybody to stay down you know that's like the that's what everyone thinks the hunger games is for but like the movie kind of goes into it with viola davis being like what is it for it's like to show us who we really are you know like yeah, anyone which, can which, become a killer which why would you want people to know that yeah but it's like, <laughs> like the 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 normie idea of the hunger games yeah. is you you do it at least in the original movies they do it to hold the the other yeah because like districts we're down. killing two of you every year because we can and it gives you a champion but then they end up, rating, the ratings are down and Snow has the idea that getting to know the people mm -hmm. before they get slaughtered will make you like them more and you'll actually want to keep watching. Mm -hmm. And then it slowly evolves from there. It turns from a gladiator duel to Survivor, slash, like the reality TV show, like Big Brother, where mm -hmm. we get to know the people and then we watch them get slaughtered and you're like, damn, my, the one I wanted to win won. Yeah. And then they add donations and it's noble. And it's a very cool, it's basically about the PR of sports mm -hmm. more than the actual sports yeah it's like maybe we can introduce betting into it like someone says at one point yeah like betting um, is a huge that's why gambling isn't illegal on sport but that's the reason that sports do, does so well is because mm -hmm. yeah there's a whole ecosystem behind it and the hunger games was missing that and that's really interesting it's mm -hmm. like a pr movie almost it's kind of like it's like a biopic of the air jordan movie mm -hmm. or like the tetris movie yeah it's like that's that's what this is it's a biopic about the creator of the Hunger Games as we know it. Mm -hmm. And that's super interesting until it stops being that because the games are over 
Lucy Gray wins, <gasps> and then it ends up being life after, and that's where the movie really fell apart for me. And it's interesting, because so she gets to survive, and it's not like the New Hunger Games where she becomes a celebrity and gets to live in the capital, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's I just guess because like, it's the first one. But... Yeah, they they send her, they just send her back. Give her some dosh. Uh, they give her some money, which is enough for her to buy a new guitar and a fancy new dress. Um, a fancy dress. A fancy dress, but it's like it doesn't really go into... There's no life after the Hunger Games. I guess the life is a life of like PTSD, I yeah, guess. She, but also she doesn't she's have like, PTSD. I still got blood in my hands. <laughs> they make a point to bring up the fact that she's got one foot still in the in the in the arena. <laughs> in the arena. <laughs> but we see her literally one scene earlier singing and dancing in the mm. in the in the local pub. She's going about it. She's having a ball. Everyone. It kind of seems like her life is, <laughs> no, didn't change. If anything, her music's going to be a bit better because her guitar's a bit nicer. And her ex-boyfriend wants her back. Um, they just don't go into it enough. I think if they mm. actually focused on that, then that might have been interesting as well. Like, I feel like the um, like the rebels, was a bit of like a forced in, because like it's like they bomb they bomb the Hunger Games, and then you see Sejanus talk to like a few people who are like rebels. Well, they needed one to make the arena look different. Mm -hmm. So they blow up the arena, and then the arena has a bunch of holes in it and places to hide, which allows them to learn that, oh, if the arena's more interesting, the games is more interesting, which, again, I really like. But you're right, they really don't go into the rebellion. They more use it as, like, to remind us that people aren't happy. Yeah, that, yeah. Because if staying, they didn't yeah. show that, everything doesn't look too bad. Like, mm -hmm. it's a working society, sure. But that's just like the 1800s kind of deal. Like, it's mm -hmm. like everyone was pulling their own weight, living their own life. What it's meant to be is that each district gives everything they have to keep the capital rich as fuck. But they're all hanging out at the pub. They're all singing, dancing. Yeah. Like, we see a lot more happy times in the districts than we do sad times. Yeah. Minus the part where people get shot and, like, Nazi Germany levels of, like, shit going on. But you're right. For the most part, it is happiness. Mm -hmm. And we're watching a bunch of gypsies. Ro Romanis? I don't know. You can't watching, call them gypsies. What, what do you call them? Travel we, traveling folk. We see a bunch of traveling folk <laughs> swimming around in a giant lake. Yeah. So it's like District 12 seems like a pretty fantastic place to live mm -hmm. because Lucy. Other than the Nazi stuff. <laughs> well, Lucy gets chosen for her reaping and she has to go die in the Hunger Games and she walks up there with a full face of makeup and her eyelashes six feet long. She was pristine, proper. Sure, that's part of her quirky character. Everyone loves a quirky girl. I think they, but she didn't have any dirt on her. Whereas Katniss looked like absolute shit. Mm -hmm. Like Katniss didn't have makeup on. She had like dirt in her face and like her. She was in a shitty blue outfit. Whereas like, and like that's why you're like, oh, conditions are rough. Mm -hmm. But then you cut to Songbird, and she's like, yeehaw, which does take away until the sudden brutal death. So along the the movie, you know, throughout parts one and two. You kind of see this fledgling little love story that is like, I don't know, I felt like it was a bit forced. Like he like kind of just really just falls head over heels for her. <laughs> you see, I'm usually against that kind of love story, mm. but I don't know. The, the fact they're both hot, like- You know what I would have liked? I would have liked that they both are using each other to win. Because yeah. he needs to use her to get the plinth prize, to get his family out of poverty. She needs to use him to win. Because she says, what are we going to do for me to win, you know? Like, you see, like, she's determined kind of in the, the, the end. So I would have liked that they both start, that they're going to use each other, and then they fall in love. Maybe we needed more than this three-hour movie to it's do that like, in. It's like they kind of do because they don't, but they allude to it because she, <laughs> yeah. he's like, is this real? Yeah. So it's like, maybe that was... That's, maybe That was them trying to yeah, fit maybe that that's, in. Maybe but... that's in the books, or maybe... Mm. That was a thought they had. That's what I, and like me but and I- I don't know, I kind of believed it. I don't usually believe love stories, but I don't know, they're both hot. They both <laughs> felt like they didn't fit in. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I didn't I think hate it as much as I usually hate love stories. There's like two days before the games. They, they give they themselves meet. no wiggle room. Like, it comes into play with the fact the drones are terrible later on, mm -hmm. as they had no time to build them. Yeah. But it, yeah, it really is Lucy Gray gets dropped off the day before the games. There's no training like there mm -hmm. is in the original. She pops out of a train, and they're like, all right, tomorrow you're going to go kill some kids. Yeah. Woohoo! And that really writes them into a corner as far as getting to know each other goes. I think, yeah, they should have at least had some time jumps or something, or just, like, shown some montages mm. <laughs> to just show, like, time passing, just because I don't believe a one-day love at first sight love story, um, especially when he's uh, not... The Little Mermaid? <laughs> he's not shown to be a different person. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's not shown to be someone who would give up or, like, let something as, as simple as love yeah, change him. He's and not I guess a dreamer. Maybe, maybe that's, like, 
oh, that's why Snow's so cold now is because love hurt him once and now he's... Snow's cold? Um, <gasps> Snow always lands on top, baby. I'm I, like, I want to change my last name to that so I can make that my family it was, motto. I enjoy, that goes fucking hard. The line is, Dinklage says to him, it's good to see Snow fall. And then later on, he's like, Snow always lands on top. And I'm like, they both well, his work grandma really says that well. to him, you know? Yeah. They both um, work really well. And I'm like, all right, fuck, yeah, that goes hard. Good on her. Yeah, but I just don't... I don't imagine someone who... Um, he was so focused on, like... He was very I need to get my yeah. family through this, being like... <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, he, he spent... Everything we saw of him was cold and calculated. Yeah. Like, not talking to the person he got along with the best because it would make him look bad in front of everyone else. But he still had to be friends with the person that no one else liked because mm. his dad was the rich one giving away the money in the plinth prize. So I was like, very schemy boy. Like, mm -hmm. had a lot of shit going on, all for his family's wealth. Mm. But then... Yeah, girl. Yeah. Well, hot girl. <laughs> hot girl. And then act three happens. So, um, sorry, part three happens. Sorry, part three act happens. Act three happened an hour ago. So by, by whatever means necessary or whatever happens, they both end up back in district 12. Him as a little Nazi foot he, soldier. Yeah. He cheats at the end of the hunger games to make sure Lucy wins, mm -hmm. even though the, even, uh, Viola Davis technically decided that they're all going to die in there by unleashing snakes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the line you said last night, how the little girl was like, do we get to go home now? And then snakes. snakes. <laughs> um, uh, she gets sent back to District 12 because that's just what they do. Mm -hmm. And he gets sent to District 2. No, he gets sent to District 8, eight but then because he cheated. Somebody. But then he gives the rest of his money to go to 12 because he loves Lucy and wants to spend the rest of his life with Lucy. But... That money was tigresses. Nope, sorry. So, so, yeah, he's like, he goes immediately, like, oh, don't care about my family anymore. Sacrifice that. Give it to this guy to get me to Lucy Gray. And then he goes to Lucy Gray. Well, he just finds her. He stumbles upon her. And after his first shift of um, killing some innocents. Literally day one. <laughs> day Literally one. day one. <laughs> so him and Sejanus find each other, his 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 butt buddy. Um, he goes and he finds her and he's, they see each other. They get in a bit of a, uh, there's a bar scuffle. Um, and then he finds her, you know, tuning her guitar, singing a little song. Next to a, the fakest rock I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and then um, they start their forbidden love story. You know, it's like, we can't be seen together. Which, yeah, they never go into that it's forbidden. And he finds her on day one. Mm -hmm. And that's where the whole... You, you mentioned last night that it should have been a miniseries. Like, yes, if yes. they somehow gave this to Disney, Apple or Netflix as a five, even a five part series, yeah. make it five hours. That way I can stop whenever I want to. Mm -hmm. My main problem is Snow goes from a good a good guy in love mm -hmm. to a big old jerk that's willing to kill people mm -hmm. and conniving will become President Snow that we know later on. But they just skip there. The first two hours of the movie are slow. The third hour of the movie is also really slow, but they rush it. Like it is the slowest, fastest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. I think they just have so much to cover and 47 minutes wasn't enough, but they're just like, fuck it, let's mm -hmm. just go. To be near part three, he's still the nicest guy in the world mm -hmm. and just wants to love Lucy Gray. But by the end of, by the end of like 45 minutes later, yeah. he is willing to kill her well, it's because like, he's a little bit loopy. Maybe? He's like, he's like, maybe we could run away together up, you know, we can run away, we can have a life together. And she's like, yeah, let's do it. He's like, fuck everything, fuck the capital. We're gonna do it together. And then the next scene, he's calling Tigress and he's like, I'm coming back. I found a way back. And then it cuts back to him and Lucy Gray. He's like, we're running away together, right? He's like, I was gonna, I was gonna <laughs> go off as the training, but now I'm back with you. He's, he swaps like five times. Mm. And one of them is even, he gets offered to be an officer because his IQ he's way too is smart. so high. And they're like, you're going to District 2. And he's like, oh, but Lucy, I love Lucy. Nah, fucker, let's go to District 2. He's like, my way back in, huh? It's, yeah, he flips lots between Lucy and his family and not in like a torn between them kind of deal. He's never, it never seems torn. Yeah. It really is just like, he picks it's just one, like, oh, which, then he swaps to which, the other. Which character are you and in he this He swaps scene? to the other and it's insane. And mm. it really drags down the, sh the movie for me. That yeah. last 45 minutes basically killed it. First... Yeah, but imagine that last 45 minutes was done over three, like, 90-minute yeah. long episodes. I mean, it could have... You what just see was... his slow, like, decline as he's killing a person each episode. Yeah, it should have been a week <clears throat> of him having to, like, r like rifle through people's homes, beat the shit out of kids... Have him hang to find, people. ...to have... find those rebels that yeah. they were talking about. Because that way, you set the rebels up in the start that they're actually bad guys. Like, what they're doing is not great. They're still killing people. 
they think they're doing it for the right reasons, but they're bad guys as far as anyone in the capital is concerned. He's from the capital. And you then, do see that for like 10 minutes where he's like, do you think they're doing the right thing, Sejanus? Like, but then he instantly joins them. Like, yeah. Yeah, because of Lucy Gray. I, got, I, I hate saying Lucy Gray. But Pegasus. I'd love to see his his slow decline into like, they're doing fucked up shit. What do yeah. you mean? How can you see the Resi- right in this? Reside himself to hating them. You need and to see Lucy's how back. the madman sees the world. Yeah. You then, know? then Lucy comes back. He loves Lucy. Oh no, Lucy's in league with the rebels. Which one? He like, needs to oh, make a choice. Yeah. He never... Yeah, he made a choice, but he never had to make a choice in this movie. It's never really... Like, he ha- he was offered. He was like, offered something and he's like... In the end, yes. in the very end, he didn't have to make a choice. Yeah. She made the choice for him by, like, running away. Did she, though? It's so ambiguous. Yeah, I didn't know if he was... She was playing him the whole p- whole time. She just kind of hated him, I guess, when he she caught him out in that lie about killing people. As far as I can tell, that was the point. Mm. Because what they wanted you to do was be like... There's a line where he says... Uh, where Tyrion Lannister says, it's not, it's not knowing that will drive you crazy. Mm-hmm. And everyone, I think, is thinking oh, it's ambiguous, so him not knowing whether he killed Lucy and whether she loved him or hated him and was going to turn him in, although why would she? But that drove him crazy over the next mm-hmm. 50 years, and that's why he's such an asshole. Yeah. Because he was driven mad by love. Mm. But it, it really does go from Lucy's in love with him, it starts raining, he finds a gun, and that might be his way back into the capital once more. Just... Because we love our ways back into the mm. capital. We love them. He's like, I have a way back in. You always had a way back in. <laughs> you know? It's like, yeah, we didn't until the guns were found. Done. You could have dumped the guns. But I guess they do reference earlier that they have forensic testing in this one. <laughs> so it's like... And you have to destroy the gun. You can't just mm. wipe it down. Because he has the gun. He shoots someone with it. Instead of wiping it down, he just like, hide this. Yeah. He, he should have said, burn this. Yeah. Like, how does gun DNA work in the Hunger Games? I don't fucking know. They decide to zoom in on Lucy's face and the image is real cold. It's raining and she's like suddenly very like high pitched and like. <laughs> and she says her titular I'm line. I'm not made of sugar. <laughs> I'm not made of sugar. Which I, it's like, it's kind of, you you realize that she's not. And that's why I think she was playing everyone the whole time. Because the grandma sees it and the grandma goes to Coriolanus and she says she hasn't been a young girl for a very long time. Or she's been a grown up for a very long time or something like that. You know, so she ain't some young southern bale. Yeah, it could just be poorly done. <laughs> I like that idea. Uh, but that's, it's... I would probably watch the first two hours again, but I would definitely skip the end because they the lack of resolution is meant to be the resolution because it carries on, but it just leaves you unsatisfied. Like, if you were to cut this when the games end, you'd be happy. Yeah, like I mean, I, I, you'd I, be I, like, "Wow, Snow changed the games forever," and maybe he gets sent to District Eight, and that you're like, "Cool, he grew up in the army." Sure. As much as I hate them turning things into two movies, I would have liked to see this maybe as two movies. I guess talking about it now, um, it's like making me relive the movie through my head, looking over at the Portuguese movie trailer um, as it was playing. I saw like, "It's the love of I was like, "Whoa." <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree with my with my off-screen idea that this should have been done longer, slower, darker. His change needs to be like a slow de- decline into madness. Yeah, I think it's insane but that um, TikTok is going insane for this movie. There's theories. My there's girlfriend's everything. TikTok every night. I'm hearing I'm hearing the songs from Are this you? movie. Are I'm hearing you? theories. People I think-, think that. She's Lucy that Gray, Lucy is, Gray President is, Coyne. is President Coin. That she's Katniss's grandma. Yeah, that and that's she how she knows the that's song. How she knows the song, even though like did Lu- they never say whether Lucy wrote that song? I guess maybe. I don't know, but but you yeah. do see like a scene of the hanging tree. That's an interesting. I think this movie was like a TikTok marketing masterclass. Dude, they saw what was that? There was a movie like um. Well, apparently this movie was gonna fail. What like, was the movie with the the fire and water people that like Pixar did recently? Oh, Elemental. Elemental. Elemental flopping. They did like TikTok. They like poured a bunch of money into TikTok, made like a TikTok trend, and then the movie became the highest grossing. It being <laughs> Spider Verse. Oh really? Yeah. Damn, I'll have to look. Cause yeah, I saw it when it was flopping. But yeah, this movie was projected to flop as well. Mm. And then that's why I was so shocked to hear that people were actually seeing it, like, and that there were people in our cinemas. Like, it, yeah, my cinema was packed. I think 
the story was really good. I like the idea of the PR behind the games and mm -hmm. that they change from a gladiator to survivor. Like that's really cool to me. But then act uh, part three just weighs it down and bores me. I, th I think the plot let it down. So the story's mm -hmm. great, plot not good because the things they chose to show, I was just like, ah. Um, yeah, six and a half. I think uh, yeah. I'll watch it again one day. Yeah, I, d I, d I wouldn't, I don't think I'd recommend it, mainly because it is so fucking long. I would, but like, only if you enjoyed the first four. I, if you're if you're a Hunger Games fan, you're gonna watch it anyway. But yeah, for a normie, if you enjoyed the world, not necessarily the movies. If you enjoyed the world, like a dystopian kind this of this does go thing, into the world more. Yeah, you get the. I think if you enjoyed that and you enjoyed Snow as like a villain, then you'd be like, oh, yeah, watch it. It's I got like, young hot people in it. Watch it. One good thing about the world again is that it's all analog technology like it's all crt tvs mm. and like old style fridges compared to the original like the hunger games movies which are like holograms and yeah. like laser technology like that really hurts it for like because then it's just like generic sci-fi versus like retro sci-fi mm. but they also have like quinjets yeah like yeah. they like I think that's why I dislike the second, the last two Hunger Games. It gets very weird. Like it's very much like this is a sci-fi rebel action movie now, yeah. but this has some charm to it. Well, my little swamp potatoes, <laughs> you've reached the end of the review. Like and subscribe, or we'll put you in the Hunger Games.